some people would be like, no, nah, as a truck driver, you just got to make stuff like that happen. No, you don't. Who said that? Okay, so I just came off home time and I'm going to grab an empty and then we're going to go to my first stop, which I believe I am going to chat, I don't know. I'm going somewhere, but I'm about to go ahead and pick up this empty real fast. Okay, I'm in the yard, so we're in the clear. But this is the type of stuff that I be talking about. I don't say it too often. And I'm not going to take it personal because who knows what this person meant. But I just went into this guard shack and I asked them for an empty, right? So they know that I'm here. I bobtailed in. I'm just coming to get an empty. So he's like, oh, okay, you've been here before? I'm like, um, probably have, but I can't remember. And so he directs me on where to go to get this empty. So he says, you're just going to go straight and you're going to turn left and the MPs will all be over there. I'm like, okay. So I start walking away and the guy behind him is like, hey, give her a map, give her a map. Why don't you give her a map so she don't get lost? So at first I'm like turning around off instinct cause I know he's saying her, I'm the only her in here. So I turn around and this guy is looking for a map. I was like, I only got to turn left, right? He like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know how to see I've been giving people benefit of the doubt all the time and it's not something that I would get upset about you know because at the end of the day it's not even all that serious but it'd be little things like that where it's like you wouldn't have been trying to make that much of a deal about someone being lost or needing a map if it was like a man like I, I don't know they'd be like they'd be making little sly comments like that and it just be like yeah okay like, I, I even think he was playing with me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really not upset or, or irritated or anything like that. But at the same time, it's like, sometimes I wonder if it is sexism in a way because I'm a female. I don't know. What are your thoughts about it? Because sometimes I be feeling tried. And in other moments, I be like, I don't know if they just playing or whatever. But my thing is, why is it funny? Why is it even, like, why is it a joke when I come in the room? Why isn't it a joke when another man is in the room? Because I don't hear nobody saying, give this man a map. He don't know where he's going. When all you did was say, you're going to go straight and turn left. He said, you're going to turn left. It'll be on your left. That's not something that you need a map for. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm practically right here. It, all I had to do is. So I'm gonna try to explain as much as I can just so that you can get an idea of what I'm doing for the people who are just super interested in the specifics of things. So now that I'm picking up an empty, because the goal is once you pick up an empty, you go to wherever you're supposed to be picking up a load and you drop off the empty or you allow them to load the empty trailer. You know what I'm saying? So now that I have my empty, I checked it and everything is good to go. I am sending to my manager that I have empty number da, 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 because each trailer has a number on it. So once I tell them that, then they'll give me the load that I'm looking for. Now this is different for people who are owner op. Owner op has a totally different get down um, with almost everything when it comes down to getting loads and things like that. But as for company, this is what I am doing. And this is pretty much what I've done for the companies that I've driven for. Now I'm about to go hook up to this trailer. I did back into it. So my locking jaw is locked in place around the kingpin of the trailer. Now all I'm going to do is attach my hoses to the trailer and I'm going to let up the landing gear which you've seen in multiple videos, but I'll just show you real quick in this one.
Okay, so pretty much the blue is the service airline and the red is the emergency airline, which the blue is engaged when you step on a brake pedal and the red pretty much supplies air to the trailer air tanks. But for the most part, blue goes with blue, red goes with red. You don't mix the two. trailer to make sure I did the tub test but I want to make sure that the kingpin is inside and secured in the locking jaw which I don't know if you can tell but this is where I'm looking at and up close I can see that there is a metal bar in front of the kingpin which typically means that it's locked in place I'll do another tub test before I pull off just to make sure. But once you see that metal bar, you should be confident that your trailer will not detach from your tractor when you're driving. That's the goal. Now this is the landing gear and this is the handle. So now I'm just doing one more look around. I normally check the tires just to make sure they're okay. I also check this part, make sure that it's not loose at all. I check the lights, which the lights are fine. <sighs> Sorry, it was raining. But also underneath the trailer, not only do I check the kingpin and all that, I look on the opposite side down the trailer to make sure that the um what is it called the frame of the trailer i feel like that's not the right word it's been a minute since um school but pretty much the foundation of the trailer isn't like breaking so for instance there's like metal bars going down the trailer if you see that a bar is like broken or something like that it can indicate that the floor of the trailer is not secure so that's what i'm looking at and now since I told them what trailer I have, I just received six messages, which is my trip. So now what I do is I pull out my memo pad. I've said this in previous videos, but when I receive loads, they typically have a load number, they have a pickup number, they have the address to the shipper and the receiver or the cons and all of that. And so I just wanna write all of these things down because I know some people, they take pictures of it, but for me, I would much rather have it written down because for one, I don't wanna take up all my storage taking pictures all the time, um, even though you could like delete them, but still. And then for two, it's just a habit. My trainer, she taught me to, I just received another message. Um, my trainer, she taught me to do it this way. So that's what I'm doing now. In the message, it pretty much tells you like the address, it gives you the phone number of the location that you're gonna be picking up and dropping off at. It tells you the appointment time that they expect you to be there. They also give me the pickup number. And the thing about the pickup number is you definitely want that with you because when you're going to pick up the load, they're gonna ask you for that number and you have to give it to them otherwise they can't give you the load sometimes they have situations where they just ask you like okay well where are you headed what's your your um company name and they'll be able to find the shipment from there but you typically don't want to just walk in there without your info because you will have to walk back to your truck so it's looking like i'm going to illinois which is fine and somebody asked in the last video where pepper was pepper's in here with me she's just a good baby she'll she'll be right now she's chewing on her toy i think that's her toy i hope that's not my stuff yep that's her um she has a bone in here that she be chewing on she's a good girl she knows so far my routine so she doesn't get like wound tight when i leave the truck or she doesn't have any issues with me needing to do what i have to do out here because she was born pretty much in this truck not really but like yeah 
now that I've written all those things down, now I put the address to my shipper in my GPS. I also use my phone GPS as well. And then also my company will tell me which gas station they want me to, or I keep saying gas station, y'all be tripping when I say gas, which fuel, uh, fuel stop they want me to go to. Typically when you drive company, they'll recommend a fuel area a certain fuel stop instead of you just going to anyone because they want for you to get the discount so they don't have to pay that much because they give you a card like a prepaid credit card where you go to the stop and you actually um just swipe their card you don't pay for for the for the uh, fuel so they want you to go to select locations so that they can get a discount now a lot of these places i've probably been to before so i don't really need to trip plan but typically i know everybody has their own way of trip planning and things like that um me i don't want to complicate things because i like to be on the go i generally just google maps it i'll go on google maps and i'll satellite it and i'll see okay where are all of the entrances and exits to this location what streets is it on and things like that and i'll look to see how tight certain turns are and things like that on the google maps satellite viewing another thing that i do is when i do look it up on my gps on a gps it gives you a list of the roads and things like that the freeways and things like that that you're going to be taking so I like to just go through that list, make sure that I'm comfortable with these roads. If I've heard anything about a certain road being closed, then I'll find an alternate route. But for the most part, I just like to look through the GPS and a lot of times I'll match it to the GPS on my phone just to be sure that this is the best route to go. And then from there, I'll just start driving and use the GPS, you know? I think that just paying attention to where you're going, that's like the best way. And I've been doing this for over two years and I haven't had an issue yet so I know some people are like maps make sure you have your maps I would say have a map in this truck but you don't have to pull it out to trip plan you do it the best way you can and for me whenever my GPS isn't acting right I just pull out my phone and use that GPS which I use the truck maps GPS all I'm really saying is don't complicate it and don't let these people make you feel like you gotta complicate it just to be out here you don't you don't, you don't, you don't. It's not complicated at all. So I already put Pepper's food in her bowl and all of that, she has water, so she's good. Me on the other hand, it's on, how long is it gonna take for me to get there? It's looking like it'll be about four hours. So I'm gonna stop at a rest area on my way there cause I'm not hungry right now. So I'm not gonna put anything out for me to eat, but I'll typically put something out for me to eat. Um, it's just not right now. So. I'm gonna go ahead and start driving. Um, it is raining outside today, but it's not bad. And depending on, I don't think that the rain is much past Michigan because that's where I'm at right now. So I should be fine. So yeah, I think the next time we will speak is at a rest area because it looks like there is one pulling up soon. So it says that we're five hours away. It looks like it's 292 miles from where I'm at. So they got me deadheading that far. That's wild, okay. So I'm emptying it out all the way out there, which deadhead just means that you have an empty and you are traveling to go pick up your load. So I didn't even get my load and I'm going almost 300 miles out. All right, see you guys at the next stop. I forgot to say, just since I'm trying to explain everything, before I can pull out of this place, I forgot to say I have to go to the guard shack. And there, they typically want me to open up the trailer just to make sure that it's empty because they don't want you to steal stuff. And then you can pull off. So that's what I'm about to do right now. And then after that, I'll be on my way.
at Love's in Indiana. So now I'm turning my truck off. I'm just grabbing my fuel card and my rewards card. And then I just put on my gloves, which I lost one of them. And now my brain is gone. good images it's real simple just in case you wanted to know how it looks you're generally just getting fuel you get DEF fluid and you get fuel for both sides of your truck and that's that I'm trying to hurry up and get her puppy pad and throw it away over here so I can just pull off okay so now we're about two hours away from our shipper. We haven't made it yet. Which it feels like we should have been there already, but it's just, that's just how it is when you have a long deadhead. I feel like I've been in this truck all day and I ain't even shipping nothing yet. But we're about two hours away. <laughs> for like two hours I forgot I was recording so I'm very sorry I just made it to the cons or I'm sorry the shipper um, it is 5 12 p.m. I had to do a little detour by the way on 69 going north I believe there was a huge like accident where this pickup truck had a camper attached to it and it had flipped over and blocked the entire freeway on the northbound side which I hope they are okay because it looked tough out there um, it was a complete backup nobody was moving because it was blocking the entire way so um, prayers to them because that looked pretty difficult and I hope that they're okay but now that we're here I already dropped off my empty I had dropped it <laughs> and now I'm over here. I just hooked up to my loaded trailer. All I had to do when I got here is go to the guard shack, tell them my pickup number, which I was telling you guys about. They asked for it. Um, and then they told me the instructions of where to both drop my empty and then where to pick up my trailer. So now I'm picking it up right now. All I have to do now is attach the air hose and then lift up the landing gear. And then of course, you know, you want to check the trailer, make sure that there's no leaking air hoses, like where the, um, where the tandems are, make sure that all the tires are good, make sure the doors open and close, make sure that there is no missing rivets and things like that. So those things, it's very simple to do. I also am taking my break right now because I have two hours left on my clock before I have to take my 30 minute break so I'm taking it right now and it says that I have four hours 35 minutes left of driving time officially so I might do a small little video of how to understand the drive clock because I know that some people until they get into it I guess it's a little confusing for some people I guess I could like give people a, a better understanding of how the clock operates and things like that maybe I'll do that but right now I'm really just waiting on this clock to reset so that I can drive my last four hours and it says that I'll be at my destination in three hours and 33 minutes it says I'll get there at 8 49 but I think it'll bump me up an hour because I'll be going in a central because right now I'm in eastern so I should get there at like I want to say around 8 p.m it says I'll get there at 8.49, which it'll bump me up an hour. I'll give myself a 10 minute grace period, so I'll get there around eight, which is really late. I typically do not like to stop that late, but I do want to get this over with. So I don't want to wake up and finish the load. I want to just get the load done with. So depending on how I feel, I might, um, I might drop this load off tonight, but if it gets real dark, I don't like to drive when it's real dark, see? Some people would be like, no, nah, as a truck driver, you just got to make stuff like that happen. No, you don't. Who said that? I'm not out here chasing money. I'm out here making money. And I'm not about to do it to the to my detriment. 
and I'm not about to be out here driving where now I feel uncomfortable because it's late at night or where I'm tired or sleep deprived or to the point where now I hate driving trucks because I keep getting the most unnecessary loads or I'm just at the wrong company and I'm trying to stick it out or or I got um, a terrible um, account and so I'm just doing all this stuff because I can make 200 more um, per check and things like that. I'm not doing all that because that's how you burn out. And trucking can be as difficult, as rewarding, as simple as you want it to be. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be stress-free, but I wouldn't force yourself to do everything just because that's supposed to be the mentality of a truck driver, because it's not. Do what you feel comfortable doing and leave those tasks to the people who are up for it, because it's nothing wrong with being up for it, but if you're not up for it, don't burn yourself out trying to. I have so many people in my comments saying to do this or do that, do this and do that, and those are great tips, but you also have to take into consideration your personality type. And some people will say, oh, well, if you're not gonna be a, a grinder or you're not gonna do this or that, then why are you even in trucking? I plan to work smarter than harder. That's my goal. And trucking isn't everything. So I'm just following God on this. I trust that he has given me the wisdom to do what I feel is best, what he knows is best. And we just gonna do it like that. And if you are considering trucking and you feel like you gotta do this, 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 and that, rewind it back and take into consideration all of the facts before you just go and decide oh i'm gonna be an owner operator and i'm gonna make this amount of money and i'm gonna have a fleet of trucks because you may not be the one up for it you don't want to end up in a position where you like man what did i get myself into you just don't want to do that but that's enough of me talking i just got on the scales and this is my scale What you normally do is you get on the scales, you don't put your brakes on, and they're allowing me to print this ticket now, so just in case, just in case I get pulled over or anything, I can show them the ticket. But what you do is you just put yourself in neutral, and the scales are balanced, so they're not going to have you. Um, slide either way. Thankfully this place has a scale. If you don't have a scale at your shipper then you could just go to any truck stop that has the cat scale or there's just cat scales randomly in any area. Just google or look up a cat scale on your GPS and it'll pop up somewhere. Alright, so it's much, much, much later. It's about 7.30 right now. I decided to stop because it was starting to get dark and um, this was the closest rest area before I pictured it would be dark. So I went ahead and stopped. I will resume in the morning. What I'm gonna do now is just take my hair out of the scarf, get ready for bed. I'm going to finish listening to a sermon, which I was already doing, and then I'm going to try to edit a little bit tonight, and yeah, so I really just wanted to put a little more depth into my day, just because I don't know if I've ever been as descriptive as I was today, and just in case you're new and you wanted to know a little bit more about, you know, what it is, it's pretty much as laid back as you would think. There are times when the day can be a little more hectic. This just so happened to be a very chill day. But for the most part, your main, the majority of your day is driving and unhooking and rehooking to a trailer. So with that being said, if you guys have any questions, let us know in the comments. For those who are watching who are OGs, they'll probably be able to answer your question better than I can. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you all so much. And I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye.